Thank you, Sam. Okay, so um, let's go with uh, the end zone. And uh, to start this end zone, uh, we propose you a presentation of our tips and experiences with uh, imagery networks. So first, uh, we will talk about the basics of setting up an imaging, an imaging system. Sorry. After that, uh, I will present three imaging systems that we created in the team. Uh, each system has its specificity, and we will talk about the improvements we added along the time. And to conclude, we will summarize the main ideas and tips of the talk. So the first point is the communication protocol. So when you think about the design of a, an imaging network, you have to think about enabling exchanges between the different uh, components. So here we will use uh, nano computers and SSH for the communication between them. So SSH is the abbreviation of uh, Secure Shell because all the communications are end-to-end -end encrypted. Uh, moreover, uh, this protocol is very easy to use in a shell and works well with the, the current uh, operating systems. It, enable, uh, it enables us, uh, you to connect to another computer remotely and launch some commands on it. So at the first connection, you just need the password of uh, the remote computer, but you can pair uh, the two computers by generat generating a key like RSA key and send it to the other computer. Then you will be recognized as a noun host and we will see it later in the end zone. So the second point of the basics is the material compatibilities. Uh, it might be the main thing you have to think upstream uh, of uh, when you design the network. So if you need a particular sensor or a particular computers, you should think about the compatibilities with all uh, the other components, sorry. And uh, we will see that in some cases, uh, the compatibility is impossible between two components, often because of uh, proprietary drivers. Also, we have the, the autonomy of the systems. So uh, it is uh, the, my last point uh, of the basics. So if you want continuous uh, acquisitions, like it's often the case, you, you have to automate acquisition procedures in some way. So one approach is to have to use uh, the scheduled tasks uh, of the operating system because all operating systems have such a tool. Uh, you then choose when to run uh, the acquisition scripts and the system uh, becomes automated. Another approach is to schedule a waiting time between each acquisition within the programs. So uh, you also should design your network with a hierarchy to have a global control on it. You should prefer a tree structure uh, with one server linked to the internal network of your company or your institute. Uh, also, that server should, also, uh, should be connected to all the clients in the local networks. So we will see next what is clients and server. And uh, it is uh, the clients that are connected to the cameras. And to be precise, each client manages one camera. OK, so I think we can go to uh, the, our experiences. Uh, and let's go with, uh, with the first exper experiences, experience. Sorry. Um, and this one was made by Pejman Rasti in 2018. Um, it has been designed to be used in growth chambers. This network uses the raspberries and the official camera modules for uh, raspberries. Uh, on the right of the screen, uh, you can also see the map of the architecture of the network. So we have a computer outside, outside of the room uh, to launch the acquisitions and store it into its hard drive. Also, the router ensures the connection between the computer and all the raspberries, and each raspberry is connected to a camera module. Uh, let's go with a short video of uh, this network. So here we have a high throughput imaging system because each camera captures a lot of plants. So for all the networks we will see, uh, the sensors are placed on top view. It is it is also basic uh, when when you design a, a phenotyping system. And as we said, uh, the router uh, at the end 
uh, ensure the connection to the computer out of the room. So uh, to uh, resume uh, all the characteristics of this network, so we have uh, RG RGB sensors with acquisitions on demand, and the demand is made uh, on the computer uh, outside of the room. And also the connections are wireless using the router, and we can use it uh, only locally. So let's go with the second network, uh, which was made by David Pierre in 2019. So this network is placed in the greenhouses. So here we used uh, the Kinect because it was one of the most affordable uh, RGB depth sensor. So when we say RGB depth, uh, it means uh, when uh, the components have a classic uh, RGB sensor and also a depth sensor which provide depth maps uh, of the scene. So because we use the Kinect, we had to use Windows as operating system. Uh, it is due to the need of proprietary drivers from Microsoft to well support the Kinect. And uh, as a result, we used Latte Pandas because it was also one of the most affordable uh, nano computer supporting Windows because Raspberry uh, uh, don't support Windows. So also on the right on the screen, we have the map uh, of the architecture of the network. So uh, it is really similar to the previous network, but here we have a Latte Panda in place of the computer, so outside of the, of the greenhouse room. And uh, the Latte Panda is connected to the internal network of the Institute. So thanks to that, uh, we can access the network from the computer in the office. So we don't have to move uh, close to the greenhouse room. So um, let's go for the, for the videos. Here we have two rooms equipped, equipped sorry, with a network uh, with this architecture. So the first one is equipped with eight connects. Uh, we can see that each Latte Panda is placed in an hermetic box uh, to avoid contact of uh, moisture on it. Also, uh, all the environment characteristics in greenhouse are not adapted to the presence of electronic cards. So it can be raspberries or latte pandas or anything else. And it is essential to protect them from moisture, uh, for example. So here we have the second room uh, equipped uh, with this uh, network. So we can notice that the server is far from the other latte pandas because it, is, it, has been, it has to be sorry, connected to the internal network. Um, the entire network is uh, also supplied for a UPS and we will see then what it is and uh, why we use it also uh, uh, in, the, in this network. Okay, so um, to resume all the characteristics of this network, so here we have RGB depth sensors with automatic acquisitions. Uh, the connections are wireless using a router uh, and we can connect remotely with the connection uh, to the internal network. We can also notice that the support of Windows uh, on a nano computer is very complicated because Windows need, uh, needs a lot of resources and uh, it can sometimes cause uh, some troubles. Uh, it can be with um, the updates of Windows or, uh, or other problems. Uh, Windows is very is not well adapted to, to nano computers, in my opinion. Um, OK, so we can now go to the, the third and the last network. Um, so this one was created by Adami Garbouge in uh, 2020. Uh, it was designed for growth chambers also, and it uses raspberries and the recent camera from Intel. So it is the Intel RealSense D435. Uh, uh, it is also a RGB depth camera. And on the right on the screen, we can see the architecture of the network. So it is again very similar to the previous network. Uh, so there is just some re replacement. Uh, the Raspberry re replaces uh, Latte Panda as a server, so outside of the growth chamber. Also, uh, all the components are, are wired here. So um, 
we use power of Ethernet to supply uh, the raspberries. It is more robust, uh, so with the wire, uh, it is more robust, and we also need less cables with power of Ethernet. Uh, to use power of Ethernet, we also need a switch, and uh, the switch is placed between the router and all the raspberries in the room. Otherwise, the network remain, remains the same. Um, okay, so let's go for the, the video. So out of the room, we can see the switch and the UPS. Their role is to power the components in the room and manage the network, the network parts. So the cameras from Intel are really small, as we can see. And uh, this uh, makes installation uh, much easier, uh, especially when the light elements are large, like here. Um, so to resume, all the characteristics of this network. So here also we have RGB depth sensor with automatic acquisitions. So the connections are wired uh, using the router and the switch, uh, and we also can connect uh, remotely. So moreover, to we use uh, power of Ethernet to, to supply the raspberries. And uh, here we don't need a specific operating system because the drivers from Intel are open source. So it is very uh, practical. So let's go to the system improvements part. So we can uh, see here uh, that between the first and the second network, we added the depth sensor to the network because we have seen the interest that uh, this represents for our, re our research. We also added the remote control uh, which is very useful when we want to fix an issue or just ch change something in the system. Uh, between the second and the third connection, uh, we added uh, the wired connection, which gave us a significant gain in robustness. Indeed, the environment in greenhouses is really noisy and there can be a lot of disturbances uh, and interference. Okay, maybe we have some question. Uh, in I just hear the sound of uh, Skype. <laughs> I can just make a pause. Okay, so David, you you answer the questions. Thank you. Uh, so I can just come back to the slides. So. Um, uh, now uh, I can talk about the systems of mail uh, alerts. So um, uh, these systems uh, is uh, so send uh, an, an alert explaining what and where is the issue uh, in the network. So it can be a disconnection of the server. Uh, uh, it can be also a, di a disconnection of another component uh, or an issue with some acquisitions. So the problem of disconnection might be due uh, to power failures uh, or just instability of the network, uh, especially in a wireless system, because in greenhouses, uh, the environment can be uh, really noisy and, uh, and we can have a very big instability of the network. So as we said, we also use uh, now an interruptible power supply. So we called it uh, UPS before it is just uh, it is an uninterrupt uninterruptible power supply. So this components allows us to reinforce uh, the stability of the system by avoiding micro power cuts. It can also temporarily take uh, over in case of power failure. And uh, for this to work properly, all components must be plugged in the, the UPS. So um, uh, we also add some functionality like the automatic uh, restart. Uh, sometime, sometimes you can have a power failure and we want uh, the acquisition programs to restart automatically when the power uh, come back. So we don't need for a human intervention here to restart the programs, it will be automatic. To finish, uh, we also have a fully dedicated backup system at the office to frequently and automatically make a copy of the drives in the greenhouses. So with that system, with that system, sorry, 
we have a redundant data system and we protect our data from any issue in the greenhouses. So to conclude this talk, uh, we can resume here the main ideas. So firstly, you should prefer wired connection because you will have much uh, fewer network problems. Also, you may opt for a POE, so power of Ethernet, to minimize the amount of cables uh, that can be huge. Uh, you have also to plan to be able to connect remotely to your network in case uh, of troubles or if you have something to change in the system. So you will not have to go physically to, to the network to do your task. You can just uh, connect to the system to, uh, from the office. Uh, you should also think about the compatibility of all your components. Uh, and to conclude, you should adapt the components to your needs. So the sensors, uh, the acquisition frequency, the environment of the network, etc. And, uh, and you should also adapt uh, to the technical constraints, so uh, it can be the lighting, uh, the camera specification, as we said previously, uh, like the field of view or, or something else. So uh, thank you everyone for your attention. Um, I hope you enjoyed the talk and please ask me questions if you have.